so here I am on the beach, uh, on the far, far side of the hotel zone where it's beautiful and peaceful. And I really wanted to put together a video, a vlog, talking about my experiences here with peyote. Because some of you may know that um, in being here, I've done two peyote ceremonies. And as much as my mind wants to be like, ah, no one wants to hear about my peyote experience. I'm like, you know what, I should really share what I took away from it. And just what the whole experience is like. So for, what, for people who don't know what peyote is, um, peyote is to my understanding a cactus and it's actually pretty endangered so it's actually rare and special if you do get the chance to do it and um, I had heard about peyote about a year ago and kind of put it in the back of my mind and then on the morning of my 33rd birthday I messaged one of my friends and was like hey I'm thinking of doing a dinner like are you available and he's like um, well, I'm either going to go play poker or go to a peyote ceremony. And then I was like, what? I want to go to the peyote ceremony. So um, that night we did the peyote ceremony. And just for people who don't know what the whole scenario is like. So the way it works is that you sit around the fire and the shaman is administering the peyote. It can, be, it can come in different forms, but ours came in a powder and you mix it with water. And the idea is that you come to the ceremony with an intention and you have a personal altar and then there's a main altar and the ceremony, at least the first one I did, is supposed to be very introspective to yourself. You're looking at the fire and you're communing with grandfather fire and you're seeing what messages he has for you and what there is for you to learn. So. Um, my, my first experience was interesting. I, I, at first when I came to the ceremony, I didn't even know it was overnight. So it's an overnight thing. It started around 10 PM and then went all the way till morning. Um, and see, this is what happens when you just discover the morning of your birthday, that's peyote ceremony. So, um, there was that it's overnight. And, um, if I could sum up three things that I took away from that ceremony, one of them would be my connection to my ancestors. Um, the second one would be my connection to divine feminine energy and like the really raw, beautiful, strong, soft, powerful form of it. And then the third would be my family. So I'll dive first into connection to ancestors. So at the beginning of my first ceremony, um, at first, nothing was like really happening. I actually started feeling really nauseous and I almost threw up, but I didn't. And then I got this download that said, don't eat shrimp anymore because I had had a shrimp salad um, a couple hours before, which now, now that I know more about preparing for peyote, you really shouldn't do. You should actually like really have just a very, very light meal in the morning of fruit and just try to eat fruit throughout the day if you have to. So that was interesting. And then I start. I started to feel like I was like really overthinking a lot of things and going like like really deep into one thought. And then at some point, I started crying uncontrollably, and the tears just came. And I don't know how to explain this other than the fact that I felt like my grandmother's spirits were with me, and I had my mom's mom on one shoulder and my dad's mom on the other one, and. At one point, I was like, is it possible that I'm crying their tears through my eyes? And I actually asked one of the facilitators that question. She's like, yeah, it's part of the healing. So for at least a good hour, I was just crying, crying, crying. And I didn't even know like what I was crying, but I knew that I was processing some emotional ancestral trauma, especially in my female lineage. Um, which is really interesting because when I first started my journey of waking up and you know going beyond the surface, my I did feel my grandmother's spirit come and tell me that I would be the one to do a lot of ancestral healing in our family. Um, so that happened, and then once I stopped crying, um, they expressed their gratitude to me, which was so beautiful, and they let me know that they're always on each shoulder and they're always there and I can always ask them for help for anything. And I do do that. Like I, to this day, 
I take that with me and that's something that I've integrated in my day-to-day -day life, the knowledge that my ancestors, especially my grandmothers, are not separate from me. They're always with me and I do feel their energy. They pop in and out. So that was the first thing I took from it. Um, the second was this theme of like really intense, strong female energy. And what's interesting is that the day that we did the ceremony, it was International Women's Day and it was my birthday. I was I was born on International Women's Day. Um, before it was cool, before, you know, everyone made a big deal about it, but um, that is the day of my birthday. And I just felt so connected to this regal, strong, but soft, energy and i said so many prayers around the fire for my my sisters and women and uh one thing that was really cool that happened at the end of the ceremony was there were these beautiful feather earrings for sale um and when i put them on i just felt like this queen and this goddess and this like beautiful energy that felt so regal and strong and to those day, to that day, to this day, those earrings. Whenever I wear them, I feel that way, and they're such a representation of that energy. And it was, it was. It, I want to say it was like, but I actually think the uh, the peyote was telling me to embody that more in my life. And then, what was cool was that the next day after the ceremony, I was still feeling the peyote. Like I was, I was flying high. Like I, everything was alive. It was so blissful and euphoric, and. I had this beautiful day where I was embodying that energy. Um, just to give an example, two of my friends from the ceremony, we ended up leaving and having like a bubble bath jacuzzi. And here I was getting like foot rubs in the bubble bath jacuzzi, just being a regal queen goddess. So that, that next day was a total embodiment of that energy and just a reminder that I have that within me we all have that within us and to embody that more and more so that was the second thing this connection to this female warrior goddess leader sexy feminine energy um, and then the third thing was my family like I for half of the ceremony, I was thinking about them. I found the peyote to be extremely heart opening. I was thinking a lot, a lot about my nephews. And at one point in the ceremony, I was lying down and I was staring at the stars. And that was one really cool thing about the ceremony was how it was, it took place in, in nature. So you could really experience how alive nature is and how it moved with, it felt like the, the trees and the sky and the stars were actually interacting with us and reacting to the ceremony. Like at one point, um, it actually started to rain a bit. We were like, oh my God, like what do we do? This whole ceremony is centering around a fire. And um, it was almost like the, 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 the rain actually came to like pull us off. So as I was lying on my back staring at the stars, I saw these two twinkling stars and I was like, those are my nephews because I have a video of them like dancing um, really cute one Christmas and it looked like them dancing, these twinkling stars and I nicknamed them my twin stars. And yeah, I just felt such a huge overwhelm of like love for them and my family and just this desire to really connect with them and the way I understand that now is that when I return back to Canada I want to share everything I've learned and experienced with them maybe not verbally but as an embodiment um, because I mean I manifested my dream like the, living here was my dream and I think that especially in these times now where people are living in fear um, Myself and people who have had this experience have the obligation to be a bearer of light and to hold light. So that connection with my family that I felt during the ceremony and including like my grandparents was something I'll never forget and take with me. So yeah, I did one peyote ceremony and that was beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful spiritual experiences I've had in my life. Um, I literally left that center saying to myself, this is the first day of the rest of my life. And to be fair, I've said that a, quote, a few times in Tulum, but I, that was the first time I really said that. And it was in a sense, it really opened my 
my eyes and my world up. And soon after, I really wanted to do my second ceremony just because of how epic the first one was. But I think it's extremely important, especially when you're working with plant medicines, to be honest with yourself whether or not you actually have the call to do it or if you're, quote unquote, chasing the dragon and you just want more of that bliss. You have to be really honest with yourself about your intention for doing it. So um, although I had the opportunity to do another one, the following week, I chose not to because I could tell I was chasing the dragon a little bit and I needed time to integrate what had happened. So um, about six weeks went by. I actually ended up doing cambo in that six weeks and I felt like the peyote sent me to do the cambo, which I I talk more about this in my vlog on cambo, uh, which I'll link below. Um, but after the cambo, I learned of another peyote ceremony, and this was, was with the people that I do my Temescal with. So I have a, a good connection with them. Uh, I trusted them, and it felt right. Like a lot of time had passed since I had done my first one, so I felt I was ready for um, another peyote experience. And this one was same, but very different in some ways. So. For starters, um, there's a huge Temescal component. And for those who don't know, Temescal is actually um, a Native American tradition of working with the sweat lodge. And you do ceremony and you work with herbs and there's several different rounds. So the rounds represent about 15 minutes of sitting with the, with the heated rocks, um, which are called grandmothers. And there's, um, a, there's like, herbs and stuff sprayed at the same time that was a horrible explanation but you get the point it's like a sweat lodge uh, done with intention and ceremony so um, we did we did a pre temescal and then we had the ceremony and then we did a post temescal and just the temescal being involved in it like holy shit that took it that that intensified it um, and then also in terms of setting this one was different because my first peyote ceremony was um, it was, it was in nature, but it was in one of the neighborhoods in Tulum, whereas the second one was actually 20 minutes outside of Tulum in a cenote sanctuary. So we were in the straight up jungle. Like I will put in a video here of what it was like. Um, but the trees looked here. like something out of Avatar. And what's notable about the fact that it was in the jungle was the mosquitoes were insane. Like. I can't even, I've never encountered something that was so annoying and uncomfortable in my life. And what happened was we got to, we got to the um, place where we were going to have the ceremony around 7 p.m. And the shaman didn't show up till like 1230. So there was a good few hours of us just like sitting around the fire, suffering due to the, due to the mosquitoes, but kind of having to accept it. And that was a major theme in that ceremony was how do you deal with physical discomfort? What do you do when you just have to bear it? It was, it was a huge lesson in embracing discomfort because there was literally nothing you can do. Like we started the ceremony and it was in the same format as the other one where we're sitting around the circle. And uh, anytime you felt called, you would come up for a cup of um, peyote and I, I'm, I tried every tactic to deal with the mosquitoes. I set intentions to get rid of them. I invented a dance move I was doing around the fire. Um, I covered my body in deed. And then I would go through this crazy cycle and like for at least six, seven hours, however long the ceremony was, I was in this constant cycle of spraying myself with deed. Um, then going up to the fire to see if that would work, sweating off the D, um, getting bitten, putting on a sweater, being too hot, taking that off, putting on another sweater. It, it just was like relentless. And at one point you had to heed the lesson, like embrace the discomfort and accept it. And that's one of the big things I took from it was that when you encounter discomfort, which is inevitable, especially if you are walking this path of creating your best life, you're going to encounter discomfort and how do you deal with it? And the way I took that was to accept and to use creative problem solving. Um, but acceptance was a very, very big one, especially with 
um, the post Temescal, like the, that was intense to do a Temescal after we had been up all night and then to go back into it um, and be put through like a whole sweat lodge ceremony and not just four rounds. And one round is like 15 minutes each, but five rounds. <laughs> it was intense. So lesson number one from peyote ceremony number two was embrace the discomfort and notice when you complain like complaining doesn't do anything so accept and be a creative problem solver so that was one thing that i took from that ceremony the second thing i took from the second peyote ceremony was you are what you think you are and it's such a simple statement, but profound. And how this came up was one of the first things that came to me in this ceremony. And trust me, it was hard. It was hard for me to focus on my own process because of these fucking mosquitoes. But one of the first things that came to me was that, you know, a woman can be soft and strong, um, but she always should value herself. And. You know, I thought, oh, okay, like Peyote's talking to me again about this strong feminine energy. Here we go again with that. Okay, cool. I learned this. Um, and it also said to me, you're not a girl anymore. You're a woman. And I was like, okay, yeah, here we go with these messages. But I think only after the ceremony did I really fathom what that was about and what that meant. And if I can go into this. It's a bit personal, but I've been really struggling with a lot of negative self-talk. Um, I've been speaking to myself really poorly, um, thinking that I'm undesirable, um, I'm not enough, um, that I'm invisible. And um, then I was looking at my outside circumstances as I'm saying this internally and looking at stuff and being like, yeah, it's true, you know, no one's paying attention to me. Yeah, it's true. Um, which is an absolute recipe for disaster and a very, very old, archaic way I used to think when I was in my early 20s. So it's been almost surprising that this has been coming up again. Um, and yeah, I've often said, and I'll say it again, that the work often starts with plant medicine after the ceremony. And what had happened in my case was that... Um, the week after the ceremony, I had a situation play out where I was speaking to myself in this way and projecting my thoughts and emotions and beliefs about myself onto the situation. And then the situation ended up manifesting in such a way that did prove that story to myself that, yeah, I'm invisible, I'm unworthy, I'm not enough, or, you know, I'm not wanted. And I'll be honest, it really fucking hurt. But then I took a step back and I was like, why am I being so triggered by this? Like, this is so elementary. Like, what, what is so triggering about this? Why does this hurt so much? And that's when I realized. And it, came, it it's actually so funny because I was reading this book called The Magic of Thinking Big. And one of the chapters is called You Are What You Think You Are. And it hit me as I was reading that chapter. I was like, this is what's been going on with me. It's not that... I'm invisible or this or that. It's that I've been thinking that, projecting it outwards and then receiving evidence in the outside world of what I've been saying to myself. So that was massive. And I think I'm starting to get this insight that, and I have a feeling that um, the messages about this feminine energy and the strength um, that came from the first ceremony carry through to the second and it was like the two ceremonies were working together and building off of each other to heal this part of myself that speaks so badly and so negatively to myself and that is looking outside for validation still, still after all the work. Um, and that's what I really took from it. Just that simple sentence, you are what you think you are. And it made me more mindful of the way I talk to myself and the narrative and it's an ongoing work. It will be for the rest of my life, how I speak to myself. But this, this experience made me really present to that story and to what was going on inside here instead of 
looking out there and thinking, how can I change out there? How can I seek? How can I change? But really, it all starts in here. Yeah, so a lot of stuff about the stories we tell ourselves, especially about ourselves. Um, the third thing I got from this second peyote ceremony was uh, to do with my life purpose. So for this ceremony, I set a very general intention. I talked about, well, my intention was actually to allow any messages to come in or anything that peyote wanted me to know at this time, especially in regards to my life and this new path that I'm carving out for myself of authenticity and really living my purpose, contributing my purpose. And it came right away. It's like, you're a designer. <laughs> and since you're a designer, what do you want to design? Um, and that, that was just the next question that flowed. And it was beautiful because it was like, bam, here it is. And so it follows like, what do you want to design? What do you want to make? And what was so different about this ceremony was that the first ceremony I did was very quiet, introspective. We were told to sort of like keep our voices down and keep to ourselves. But this second one was very communal. Like we would go up to the fire, we would talk, you know, we would complain about the mosquitoes but and share like whatever insights we were getting. And as much as I do like the going inward and the quiet thing, I know that for this second one, part of the healing was the community aspect. And it was actually in conversation with one of the women there during the ceremony that I started to get more downloads and ideas about what this design life purpose could mean for me. And one of the ideas I received or downloads I received was to combine design with uh, healing principles, uh, energy principles rather, and to somehow infuse principles of energy into design to create more coherence in the world. Um, which is interesting because I'm actually going to go study Reiki in about a month in Baja Sur, Mexico. So that was really beautiful. That came out of our, out of our conversation. And as if peyote just wanted to drive the point home uh, to my mind, which sometimes can be like, ah, you're not a designer. Yeah, whatever. Like you have to go back to school for that, you know, all that limited thinking. Um, what happened at the end of the ceremony in the morning was my candle had gotten knocked over. So on my personal altar, I had a candle and it just spilled over into these beautiful pink flowers that I brought with me, which symbolize um, this femininity, beauty, you know, the whole design thing. And the candle wax spilled into them. And literally when you held it up, it looked like a piece of art. It looked like a sculpture that you could hang on your wall. So, and no one else had that. Like no one else's altar had turned into a work of art except mine. And so that really drove the point home for me that yes, you are a designer, you know, that's your path and just dive deep into it. The last thing that I got from the second peyote ceremony was trust. Um, at the end of the ceremony, one of the facilitators who was on the team, the Temescal team as well, uh, gave me a hug and he's like, you're a beautiful woman. Um, you need to trust again. And I was like, uh, <laughs> fuck what? Um, and you know, it hit me like at first, it's so funny when someone tells you something that's like really true for you, but you don't want to admit it. There's this instant like brushing off like, yeah, whatever. But I sat with that and I was like, holy shit, it's true. Like I, I think I find it difficult sometimes to really let go and trust, especially with men. Um, I always feel like I have to overcompensate or overdo and I'm quite independent. Uh, so it's, uh, it's something that really hit me like a pile of bricks to trust and to take a seat back and allow myself to receive. And the, it also begs the question, you know, do I trust myself? And I think if you asked me that a couple years ago, I'd say no. But I think one of the beautiful things that I'm realizing is I do trust myself. And part of me quitting my job was stepping into that trust and trusting my intuitive gifts and my instincts to make the right decision for myself. So 
trust was a big theme that came up and it's something that I'm consciously working through and I do set intentions now um, that do involve allowing myself to receive because I do give, give, give and to be in the ebb, of flow, ebb and flow of life, just like these beautiful waves, we have to give and then receive and pull back. So trust was a beautiful message that emerged from the peyote ceremony as well. If I could also speak to the power of declaration as well, um, the morning after my peyote ceremony, when I reconnected with my roommates and they asked you know, what happened, I declared, I'm like, I'm a designer. That's the idea I got. Um, or that's the knowing I got. And it, it's so funny because they had gone on their own adventure that weekend. They were supposed to do the ceremony, but then they had an intuitive feeling like, nah, we're going to do something else. And they ended up getting this property to throw an event. And he was like, holy shit, like our, our designer that we used to work with um, is in Canada. So like you could be the designer for our festival. And then we ended up hosting an event a few days later and I was the one who like designed the poster and yeah I just like stepped into the designer role just from declaring it so just saying it out loud I am da 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 lets other people know it takes it out of here and lets people know like this is what you are and then it makes you available for the opportunities that are out there for you even if you don't feel ready or like you're qualified just start saying like you know I'm I'm a firefighter like I'm a mermaid you know whatever you want to be so that's been my experience with peyote um yeah as with any plant medicine i would strongly advise you to do a lot of research especially about who the shaman is where the medicine's coming from the set and the setting and i would also highly highly encourage you to consider the integration process afterwards because one of the things that had happened the second time around was I had like the most insane week after my second peyote ceremony um, my friends and I had put together like a one-day event right after the ceremony within one day um, I moved uh, my roommates moved um, it was the last week of my job I had friends out of town visiting and it's just like so so much and if you're anything like me where you need your quiet time to yourself to digest and process it can be a lot so I would highly recommend that after any ceremony you have quiet time to yourself to reflect and digest and journal and take everything in that had happened um, because as I've said earlier, the work really starts after the ceremony once you receive the insights and downloads. And it's like, what do you do with the insights and downloads? So that's my little advice from these two sessions that I did. Um, I feel like peyote was something that I didn't expect, but I'm very grateful to have happened and come into my life. and. I think it's no coincidence that it came into my life the morning of my birthday. Um, it really kicked off my whole plant medicine journey in my life and it kicked off my plant medicine journey in Tulum. So yeah, I feel really blessed to have done it and I'm really grateful I could share what I've learned with you. If any of this resonates, uh, feel free to comment below or send me a message. I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences in relation to peyote.